Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I beat Ganji doing commentary for the Media Speaks. A little bit of passing time turmoil there in the background. Gonna have to do it in two nights, friends. Got a massive, actually I guess that would be an extra massive a Fukushima update uh, this month. So we're gonna be doing it in two nights. It's going live tomorrow as well. And the reason I'm doing that is if you are a long-time <clears throat> listener of this show, or if you've been with me for a minute, just go ahead and completely ignore the next five minutes of the show. If you're listening after it's already live, of course, skip ahead five minutes. I'm not kidding. It's 4.05. It'll be done by 4.10. I'm explaining to everybody new what Fukushima is. Then we're getting to all the new news on it. I have four minutes. Me. Go. Fukushima is one of the what well, the single worst disaster to happen in all of recorded history. <clears throat> the meltdown which is creating massive amounts of radiation is also a melt through which meaning it has gotten out of the protective barrier and into the water to some degree and it is a melt out which means the core has been blown out of the plant and is appearing as far away as Tokyo as a black radioactive goo. Thyroid problems and cancer have gone up through the roof. Tuna, all tuna that they've been finding have radioactive isotopes in them way um, beyond what is healthy for anyone to consume. The Obama administration, his, his, uh, re his uh, response to this was to not test our food, um, virtually not at all. They have raised the amount of nuclear poisons that are safe. Well, you know that, doesn't, that science doesn't work. You can't just change the science and say that you're safe. What they're actually doing is protecting their bottom line. It's creating problems all over the world. Look at the cancer rates. Look at the mass die-off. This is in your rice. This is in your... Don't eat cheese. Don't eat mushrooms. Try to avoid uh, as much dairy as you can because uh, radioactive elements adhere to it. You can check all of this. I'm just giving you an update. Um, avoid most food from California. Do not live on the west coast of California, Washington, or Oregon. Um, Again, the, the cancer rates in these areas have been going up, and they're going to continue to go up. They're being blamed on everything but this, but the cancer rates coincide with it. And you can verify these things by looking up Dr. Chris Busby, Dr. Helen Caldicott, look up Lauren Murray, uh, look up Kevin Blanche. There are a lot of people that have been misled to think that this is something that doesn't even matter. It matters because this is in all of the food that you eat. If you order a Japanese car, there have been instances of, let's say you drive a Japanese car, I should say, the parts you get to repair the car are oftentimes juiced to some degree. I do know for a fact they have had to send parts back due to this. The fishing industry, the New World Order, whatever that means. What's that mean to you? I'll tell you what it means to me. It means that one of the things that happened is that our food supply gets all messed up and food from contaminated areas that should not be allowed to farm are allowed to farm and it's continuing to go on. And this is going to affect everything. Not to mention the least, uh, the least thing it's going to affect is if a storm or an earthquake, and we're going to report on those in a minute, <clears throat> was to take out in any way the nuclear power plant, any of the four the reactors, and building four is all but falling over. You can pretty much kiss the northern hemisphere goodbye. No, it's not going to blow up like a movie. What it's going to do is just wipe out the heart disease and cancer that it's going to call, cause. It's going to wipe out millions of people. Nobody will want to live in the northern hemisphere anymore. That's your update. I made it in the allotted time. You are all caught up to date now, so we're going to go charging in <clears throat> to the new Fukushima news. Longtime listeners, bleh, welcome back. IBTimes.com, Fukushima nuclear power plant, IAEA, report slams Japan for not acting on tsunami danger knowledge. The reason that this matters is twofold. 
first of all, you're here and see in many articles, especially the mainstream articles, we could have never seen this coming. We never knew. We didn't know. Yada, yada. The, the truth of the matter is that they very much knew. They were well aware of it. They were warned about the size of the disaster. They were warned that the earthquake and not just the tsunami caused the meltdowns. And we've covered before why that matters, of course. Because it would, uh, if an earthquake could start some of the nuclear meltdowns, which we know it did there, not all four, but some of them, then it could also happen here where we have earthquakes and um, anywhere. And we're going to cover that they're appearing all over the place. It's like the book of Revelations here. And the other part of this that matters is they're still building plants in places <clears throat> that the same people have warned about. For instance, that disaster that's about to take place in Iran, them building a nuclear power plant, is going to cure more Arabs than a billion Zionists could do in a lifetime because they're going to have an earthquake and the plant's going to melt out. It's exactly what's going to happen. All scientists have said it. Well, some of the people that um, have predicted in Japan are quite irate. Dying of thirst, excuse me. Quite irate because their, their science was relegated as uh, a tinfoil hat wearing brigades. And in fact, they have been the ones that have been right on this all along. So listen to this. Japan did not do enough to protect the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, which was severely, of course, damaged by a great wall of water and an earthquake in 2011, despite authorities being aware of the threats to the facility. From earthquakes and tsunamis, the IAEA, that's the International Atomic Energy Agency, stated in a report. The UN nuclear watchdog also criticized Tokyo Electric Power, that is, GE, General Electric, never invest in them who, of course, was the plant's operator, and he did not, it says, act on the warnings. In other words, they were warned about this ahead of time. The IAEA <clears throat> said in its final report on March 2011 about the disaster, which was the result of a massive earthquake and subsequent tsunami, that the new method applied between 07 and 09 had predicted a magnitude 8.3 earthquake off the coast of Fukushima, that is years before, <clears throat> that led to a tsunami hitting the facility. On March 11th, of course, a nine earthquake up struck off Japan's northern coast, triggering a massive tsunami. And uh, it's cost the Japanese government 300 billion in damages. <clears throat> you notice that's what matters to them, the money and damages. It doesn't mention the fact that there are small children with radioactive thyroids, precancerous tumors, in numbers that you don't see in nursing homes. It said the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant had some weakness which were weaknesses which were not fully evaluated by the probabilistic safety assessment, as recommended by the IAEA safety standards. The report obtained by Kyoto News, and of course that's a Japan Japanese news agency. TEPCO did not take the necessary precautions despite analysis in the report which is expected to act as a reference for nuclear safety measures worldwide. Pause. So when they build a nuclear power plant, they say, we get the IAEA report, which tells us the steps that we need to take. Of course, we're not going to implement them, but we read it. Okay, great. There, this is a sticker from Sticker Junkie. The show, the show is brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. Okay, great. So now you know who Sticker Junkie is. You didn't order anything yet. No, but you know he's out there. You just, you just didn't implement the ordering. Absolutely ridiculous. Thank you, Sticker Junkie. Absolutely ridiculous. There is no law. There is no forced implementation of what the IAEA wants. So whatever their report says is all but useless, as we see from this. The incident was the world's worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl in 86. No, this is much worse. For one thing, it's near a city, and for another thing, it's four nuclear meltdowns, melt-throughs, and melt-outs, not one. 
Um, and TEPCO did not take interim compensatory measures in response to these increased estimates, it says, of tsunami height, nor did NISA require TEPCO to act promptly on these results, the report said, according to the Japan Times. Prior to the incident, there was not sufficient consideration of low probability, high consequence events which remained undetected. And there were people saying that this is not the low probability in the way that they were reading it. And they had been warned again and again and again. It says, this was in part because of the basic assumption in Japan, reinforced over many decades, that the robustness of the technical design of the nuclear power plants would provide sufficient protection against postulated risks. What's that mean? If Mike Tyson, a boxer, for those of you that don't know, if Mike Tyson was to walk down the street because he was such a good boxer, he could never be shot by a thug. That's the logic that was used here. I'm dead serious. Well, you know, because our earth because our nuke plants have stood up to earthquakes that were smaller, nothing could possibly happen that would knock it down. That's the reasoning that sunk the Titanic. TEPCO, which is GE, pour your money out if you're in a mutual fund has failed to implement sufficient safety assessment measures as recommended by the IAEA and lacked protection against tsunami-caused flooding, Kyoto News reportedly said, citing the report. The operators were not fully prepared for the multi-unit loss of power, that means they couldn't cool the reactor, and the loss of cooling caused by the tsunami. Although TEPCO, which is GE, had developed severe accident management guidelines, they did not cover such an unlikely combination of events, the report said. In other words, they have completely they have completely caused this. There's no other way to put it. You want to know how bad it's getting? What, you think it's just in Japan? And we'll get back to some more Japan news in a minute. BBC.com, Nepal, that's not in Japan for you Usher fans. Nepal Earthquake. Dozens die in New Tremor near Everest. A major earthquake has struck eastern Nepal near Mount Everest two weeks after more than 8,000 people died in a devastating quake. It's happening all over the world. Did you hear me, Iran? Morons. At least 48 people. And no, I know Nepal is not in Iran. Kesha fans don't know that. At least 48 people have been killed and more than 1,000 injured, officials say. At least 17 have also died in India. The latest earthquake hit near the town of Nemchi Bazar and sent thousands of panicked residents on the streets to Nepal's capital, Kathmandu. It had a magnitude of 7.3 compared to the 7.8 of the 25th April quake. So that's obviously not isolated to Japan, the last time I saw a map. The latest quake struck 1235 Nepali time, that's 650 general means time, and was centered around 40, was centered about 47 miles east of Kathmandu in a rural area close to the Chinese border. The quake was felt in northern India, Tibet, and Bangladesh. India's home ministry said 16 people had been killed in the state of Bihar and uh, one more in Uttar Pradesh. Officials in China said one person was confirmed dead in Tibet. So the entire region, and you've got, you've got people in the Orient wanting to get back into opening up new plants as a solution to global warming, which we know thanks to climate gate isn't happening. And even if it was, it's not worth a melt down, melt out, or melt through. Thank you, General Electric. Rescue helicopters, it said, have been sent to districts of Ka east of Camp Mandu and people are believed to be the worst hit. So, with that happening all over, what do you get after you have one of these horrendous uh, nuclear accidents? Well, you get things like this. Leaking Fukushima containers could lead to hydrogen explosions. Um, what's a hydrogen explosion? Look up the Hindenburg. It's why it blew up. May 25th, 2015, containers holding contaminated water it's from InfoWars at the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant are at risk of hydrogen explosions. 
with 10% of them found to be leaking. Well, that's some high craftsmanship. Not only could they not build a power plant correctly, they couldn't find contractors that knew how to build a container. Uh, Long-time listeners know, we've gone over this, they didn't enforce with a... Uh, they didn't enforce this, the bolts properly, and the radioactivity is leaking and literally burning out some of the rubber uh, stoppers, for lack of better words, the, the uh, seals. As many as 333 containers may be defective, according to TEPCO. Do you have any idea how extremely radioactive this water is I'm talking about? And it leaks into the water. And friends, I, you may not know this, but the fish do travel. They travel. Some fish travel all the way across the Pacific Ocean, contaminating other fish and things that they come in contact with. Um, they, in pools, if a radioactive fish, uh, what do they do? They, they poop on other fish. Then other fish gets the radioactive materials as well. This is the way radioactivity works. This isn't something I made up here. So the first leak was discovered by the plant's operator on April 2nd. The discovery prompted an inspection of other containers at the site. 26 of the 278 containers examined on May 20th had some sort of leak or were bleeding from their lids. There are 1,307 containers at the plant. I wonder how many of them were made faulty and just aren't leaking yet. Yeah, pleasant thought, huh? According to TEPCO, the leaks and bleeding were likely caused by hydrogen and other types of gases that resulted from the water's exposure to high levels of radiation. Those gases appear to have accumulated in the sediment at the bottom of the containers, expanding the volume of the liquid. In other words, it's actually just building up so much pressure as the radiation uh, does what it does when it breaks down. That's why you get cancer. That's why you get heart disease. That's why your bones are bad. TEPCO reported its findings during a Friday meeting with a study group from the NRA, that's the Nuclear Regulatory Authority, not the gun ones, which expressed concern about the potential hazards of accumulated hydrogen buildup in the containers. What's going to happen? Well, if the concentration level is high, a spark caused by static electricity could cause the container to explode, the NRA official told the Ashahi Simbun. So, you're looking at a, a container full of radioactive water exploding. We've already had explosions at the plant initially. It's one of the things that led to the melt uh, out. Although all the container lids were supposed to be fitted with pressure release valves to allow gases to escape, which of course would also be radioactive. I wonder if they're done by hand for the poor schmuck. The inspection determined that one did not have that mechanism. Further review of the delivery records showed that as many as 333 others may also be defective, the TEPCO official said. So it's probably a lot more. It's probably 666 because TEPCO is always lying. They've lied all the way through this. They stated that no radioactive water was found to have escaped outside the concrete structures that encased the containers. Yeah, and you know, I'm, I'm sure that this was found due to diligence and honor. It says, we think the possibility of an occurrence of hydrogen explosion from these storage facilities is extremely low since there is no sign of fire origin or anything that generates static electricity nearby. Texmo, te TEPCO spokeswoman Yumi Yashida told the Telegraph. Stressing TEPCO's efforts to deal with the issue, Yashida added, for temporary measures, we have been removing the leaked water, installing absorption materials, monitoring the patrol, keeping the water level inside these facilities lower than the set, and keeping equipment which may generate fire away. This is, this is just dealing with the tanks, not even the actual plant. Do you understand that? This is just dealing with the water. It's a plant. What do they do with the absorption materials, I wonder? If we're lucky, they burn them or feed them to the fish. This is terrible. The containers, which are made of polyurethane, are 5.9 feet high and have diameters of 1.5 meters. That's 4.9 feet. They store wastewater from the advanced liquid processing system equipment that removes radioactive substances from contaminated water. 
Of course, we all know that um, it doesn't remove certain elements. I believe it has trouble with tritium, for instance. Max Slavo, shtfplan.com, report terrorist nuke attack may be carried out inside the United States in the next 12 months. I'm putting this in because it seems like there's more and more nuclear poison coming our way in massive amounts every day. There are more and more people that want to get their hands on a nuclear weapon. We just reported on how people... Uh, morons in Mexico had stolen radioactive material. Again, it's happened repeatedly, not knowing what they stole. Or, of course, claiming they don't know, trying to sell it to ISIS. We know that um, radioactivity, whether it's from a meltdown that was brought to you by the people that bring good things to life at GE, or whether it's brought to you by a dirty bomb, which is pretty much a glorified hand grenade and a handful of cesium, the results are the same poisoning of your health, cancer of the brain, the bones, the lungs, the heart, sickness, every cold that comes down the pike is guaranteed to come to you. It says, with nuclear material having been stolen on multiple occasions in Mexico and close terrorist ties to intelligence organizations in the Middle East, not to mention a suspected Hamas training ground just over the border, I should add, it appears that if an organization was committed to acquiring nuclear material, they could do so. Finding the scientists to build such a weapon, whether dirty or actual, wouldn't be all that difficult. Moreover, smuggling such device into the U.S. is possible, as evidenced by an 11 report, which confirms that at least one nuclear weapon of mass destruction was seized as it entered the U.S. And there is a link for that. Do you understand that? A nuclear device was caught as it was about to be entering the United States. According to Zero Hedge, and there's links again all over, such a plan may be in the works over the next 12 months, as the Islamic State, that is the scum that is ISIS, claims that it may be actively pursuing a nuclear weapon intended for detonation on American soil. Only they would take over massive amounts of land and then when they finally get their hands on America, their goal is to poison it. And that's because your average neck cutter doesn't know how to do anything other than abuse his fellow man in the name of Allah. He doesn't understand that if a nuclear disaster was to hit the breadbasket of America, most of the world would starve to death. That is absolute mathematical fact. They, they, most people would starve to death. So what they're going to do is take over if they get their, get their way. And of course we know they won't, but let's just pretend they get their way. They now have a starving nuclear radioactive world that they have inherited because they managed to poison the breadbasket of the country. Listen to these morons. It, it reminds me of that other dumbass in history, Adolf Hitler captured people, killed them, and he died because he ran out of men. You know what? Good. That's what stupidity gets. And I'm not in favor of anything else they did either. Three weeks after the first supposed attack by Islamic State supporters in the U.S., who I don't support at all, that being ISIS, in which two ISIS soldiers wounded a security guard before they were killed in Garland, Texas. The time has come to raise the stakes. In an article posted on the terrorist group's English-language magazine, Dapik, which uh, can be seen below, seems to have gotten its design straight out of Madison Avenue and is missing only glossy pages filled with scratch-and-sniff perfume ads. Oh, but they hate the West so much they steal our graphic design. ISIS claimed that it has had enough money now to buy a nuclear weapon from Pakistan and carry out an attack outside the U.S. next year. For one thing, I don't really believe it's Pakistan. They wouldn't be dumb enough to tell you where they're getting it from, but then again, look who we're dealing with. In the article, an ISIS columnist said that the weapon would be smuggled into the U.S. via its southern border with Mexico. Curiously, the author of the piece, John Can't Lie, Can't Lie, a British photojournalist who was abducted by ISIS and looks like he was forced to lie, in 2012 has been held hostage by the organization ever since. 
He has appeared in several videos since his kidnapping and criticized Western powers. Yeah, that's because if he doesn't, he'll lose his head. As the Telegraph notes, Mr. Cantlay, I can't believe that, whose fellow journalist hostages have all either been released or beheaded, has appeared in the group's propaganda videos and written previous pieces. In the latest work, presumed to be written under pressure, you think, but in his hallmark style combining hyperbole, metaphor, and sarcasm, he says that President Obama's policies for containing ISIL have demonstrably failed and increased the risk to America. Well, that's true, but you also don't want to go after this with a, a neoconservative, let's blow everything up mindset either. Cantline describes the following hypothetical scenario in Dabiq, the rag. Let me throw a hypothetical operation on the table. The Islamic State has billions of dollars in the bank, so they call on their wayaka in Pakistan to purchase a nuclear device through weapons dealers with links to corrupt officials in the region. None of that would ever get back to any of our people and our intelligence. Then again, maybe not. The weapon is then transported overland until it makes it to Libya, where the Mujahideen move it south to Nigeria. Drug shipments from Colombia bound for Europe pass through West Africa, so moving other types of contraband from east to west is possible. I do hope they have ways to test for nuclear devices like this, but again, you got to remember Obama's answer to the uh, Fukushima problem was not to test our food, so you never know. The nuke and accompanying Mujahideen arrive in the shorelines of South America and are transported through the porous borders of Central America before arriving in Mexico and up the border with the U.S. That would depend. Do you realize that nuclear weapons need to be kept at a certain temperature? Do you realize they are much heavier than people think that they are even in this day and age? The suitcase nuke is not what you think it is. Look it up. It says, uh, from there, it's a quick hop through the smuggling tunnel, and hey, presto, they're mingling with another 12 billion illegal aliens in America with a nuclear bomb in the trunk of a car. The point is, this is their intent, and I don't think it could be done with a nuclear weapon for the reasons that I've given you in my commentary here, but I think it could be done with a dirty bomb if they can just hide the uh, nuclear element in enough lead. Uh, or in a medical shipment, God forbid. Cantley continues, perhaps such a scenario is far-fetched, but it seems to be the sum of all fears, that's a must-see movie, for Western intelligence agencies, and it's infinitely more possible today than it was just one year ago. And if not a nuke, what about a few thousand tons of ammonium nitrate explosive? Now this would be easy to do, and this is bad. That's easy enough to make. The Islamic State make no secret of the fact that they have every intention of attacking America on its home soil, and they're not going to mince words with the Mujahideen and taking down two dozen casualties as it originates from the caliphate. The point is, you've got people that are taking nuclear threats like this. And you shut Sam off and listen to the, uh, the latest... Uh, top 40 mind rod of some kind. I don't know. But these are very real threats, and once these things are done, they can't be undone. What am I, what am I, am I in, am I in favor of more diligent checking and uh, the TSA reaching down to pants of everybody who goes from state to state? No! But I'm in favor of non-stop nuclear testing in the skies, in buildings, yes, Scan for nuclear, all for gamma, alpha, and beta. Gan, scan for all forms of this. Replace some of your security cameras, which you shouldn't have, with nuclear testing devices, which you should have. You do have the science to do it. It's just too expensive. It's not too expensive. It's absolutely mandatory, and the life of the entire northern hemisphere could depend on it. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Got two more stories to get to. I just want to remind you that this is brought to you by Mike, Mike McLaughlin. I can talk today. I'm so thirsty. Mike McLaughlin. You can look him up. M-I-K-E-M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. He writes some of the best fiction extant today. He does poetry. He does political commentary. Make sure you look up Mike McLaughlin. Also, friends, if you're within about a 50-mile radius of Canton, Ohio, uh, before you call Uber, before you call the next transportation taxi company, Jitney, you're going to use, 
go ahead and get a price from maybe Uber and then call Change Transportation. You can find them on Facebook. Let them know you heard about it from the correct views. And uh, you're going to get a discount and you're probably going to get price matched and he's very likely going to beat the price that they have. I'm dead serious. Look up Change Transportation. All right, guys, news.yahoo.com. Two more stories to get to before we go into tomorrow's show, the second half of your massive Fukushima update. Oil leak cleanup after nuclear plant transformer fire. Cleanup of oil leak into the Hudson River continues after nuclear plant transformer fire. Are you seeing what's happening here? ISIS wanting to blow us up with nuclear disasters from the south. They want to use it all over Europe, I'm sure. We've had threats today from the Paul earthquakes. We got Japan ignoring earthquakes, warnings, and uh, wanting to open new power plants. We've got leaking water containers from the last time they opened power plants. Now we've got this. Part of a New York nuclear power plant remains offline as cleanup continues of transformer fluid that leaked into the Hudson River. I'm sure it's perfectly safe. Don't worry, they'll get to it. All of this is perfectly safe. Of course, it all adds up to you getting sick. The plant owner says it could be weeks before Indian Point 3 is reopened. Maybe this isn't harmful. Maybe the little bit that's in your tuna isn't harmful. Maybe the little bit that's in your cheese isn't harmful. At what time does it become a lot? At what point is the radioactive level now accumulated to such a degree that all of these things matter? Several thousand gallons of oil spilled into the Hudson after a transformer fire of a non-nuclear side of the plant. Governor Andrew Cuomo said Sunday the cleanup should take a day or two. It doesn't really matter. The point being, even if, God willing, it was absolutely harmless, these power plants are nuclear ticking time bombs. Even when they're running properly, routine releases give you what Helen Calder calls just a routine cancer. Are you sick of your loved ones dying of routine cancers due to things like this and GMOs? Different story, different day. Cuomo said oil in the transformer had seeped into the holding tank and did not have the capacity to contain all the fluid The State Department of Environmental Protection set up booms over an area of 300 feet in diameter to keep the oil from spreading. The reactor itself, of course, is deemed safe and stable. The plant's adjacent Unit 2 reactor remains in operation while I feel so safe. And friends, that brings us to... The Dumdy of the Day. The Dumdy of the Day. Busting the cancer myth. It isn't just a disease of the old and aged. All right, guys, I'm going to tell you exactly why this is getting the dumdy of the day today in just a second. I thought about making the dumdy of the day the first story about ignoring the earthquake that um, caused the meltdown, but I wanted to lead with it, and I didn't want to lead with a dumdy, but it was tempting. Christina Syrich, InfoWars, the medical establishment will tell you that the rise in cancer rates is simply because we are living longer and that the disease is related to old age. Funny how they will make a living up making up lies when they can't readily explain why there has been a 3,000% increase in cancers, as estimated by some, for all ages in the past 100 years. Or why cancer rates are expected to soar over 70% in the next 20 years. So maybe the cell phone, the radioactive cheese, the mushrooms, the GMOs, and the meltdowns did matter, huh? There are those, and bomb testing, don't forget, has led to a huge increase in this. There are those who will tell you that the soaring cancer rates claims are a lie. They work hard to discredit anyone who says cancer is becoming an epidemic. They say nothing of the fact that while Americans are well-fed, meaning overweight, they are undernourished. They hide facts about increased estrogen levels caused by xenoestrogens in things like GM soy, birth control pills, and bogus hormone replacement therapies. They hardly bat an eye at the fact that our livers can't get rid of the excess estrogen because we are so nutritionally deficient. 
nor will they talk about all the carcinogenic, that is cancer-causing ingredients in our food and in our grocery stores. And if you don't believe that, then you're blind. My, my father was a man that I only saw drunk a handful of times, less than 10, I promise you, in his entire life, and he died of liver gallbladder cancer. Why? Walmart, GMO food, that's why. And again, we all eat it. I eat it. I've definitely at least cut down the GMO stuff, as you can see. But And no, they're not a sponsor, though they should be. Uh, I've switched to vitamin water, life water, getting off the sodas, getting away from the aspartame, and avoiding food that nuclear radiation has been known to adhere to. It says they also mentioned little about the systemic inflammation caused by environmental toxins, GMOs, altered gut flora, that is uh, not taking enough probiotics, and disgusting additives in our food supply. Not the addition of millions of pounds of herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, and petroleum-based fertilizers. That's because they want you to believe that it's a matter of old age. So you can just kill off the old people, which has been the eugenics dream for 150 years or longer here. And it's, an, it's more of this, let's not stop putting these carcinogens in the food because we're making money off of them. They are mute about plastics causing breast cancer and glucose causing bowel cancer. Do you want to live with uh, a not able, unable to go to the bathroom every day of your life? They failed to bring up the amount of stress an average person endures today compared to before the Industrial Revolution turned us into slaving consumers. And its cancer is not a disease of old age. It is hitting the world population at a younger and younger age. Let's remember, Pres Vice President Joe Biden, while I'm no fan of him, I'd never wish anything like this on his family, his 47-year-old son died of brain cancer this week. Did you know that? Did you? Because he was 47. He diagnosed it a couple of years after he found out he had it. They failed to bring, um, they failed to bring up any of these things. It says uh, more than, than 10,000 children will be diagnosed with cancer this year in the U.S., some of these cancers will be rare, and some of the children will be forced to undergo chemotherapy and radiation, of which can cause more cancer. How do you get around that? Look up um, uh, Dr. Peter Wolf. 